Ready? Fight. Here we go. Round number one. Sandlin comes out in the southpaw stance. And then, and then quickly switches as you say that. Yep. And now he's back. He's got a <laughs> lot of Muay Thai that. experience. He's got the Thai shorts working. So it'll be interesting to watch his footwork. A lot of MMA as well and wrestling being from the state of Ohio. Henry Williams in the black with the silver trunks. And Williams throwing a lot, but he's not landed anything cleanly of yet. Henry Williams said of that fight that we talked about that was here in Rock Hill against Manuel De La Torre, it was his funnest fight ever, even though he did abandon his game plan. Oh, lands a shot down in Sandlin. And they clinch. Stop, stop, stop. Sandlin back up over here. Back up. got one in as Wayne Spinola breaks him. Fight scheduled for five three-minute rounds. Mike Goldberg, the magic man, Pauli Malinaji, BYB 21 from Rock Hill, South Carolina. Hey, Sandlin switches very smoothly, very unorthodox. I don't know if it's going to translate into an offense, but even def from a defensive standpoint, it's not easy to hit clean. A nice jab there by Williams. Williams doing a good job of at least keeping it basic with that jab. Missing most of everything else, but that sharp jab is keeping Sandlin at bay. Sandlin, wrestler, MMA, striking, Muay Thai, boxing. He said, my speed, my movement, and my flow ah, break, lean back up. will be a key midway point of round number me. one. Look at me. It makes ah. it tricky, uh, at least to hit. You know, William's not able to really land much else besides the jab. But at the same time, I don't really see Sandlin able to translate a lot of that switching into a good offense. He's not landing much of anything. Good right hand there by, by Williams, and he's finally able to land a power punch as well. Ah, and digging into the body. Yeah, I see a cut there on, on Sandlin. I think Williams is building up off those bases little by little. Little feints there as well. Williams appeared done early in that fight back in December here. And then he weathered that storm and they ended up going the distance. It was an incredible battle. And that's one thing that Sandlin talked about. He knows the toughness of the pit bull Henry Williams, his opponent tonight. See the blood under the right eye of Jimmy Sandlin. Yeah, Sandlin's tough himself. He just he's just having trouble closing the gap on, on Williams. And it's also mainly with Williams a very good jab. So Williams is making it complicated to close the gap on him. And then he uses that jab both for defensive purposes to, to keep offsetting Sandlin's offense as well as for offensive purposes to set up uh, an attack when he wants to close the gap and throw a combination. Oh, there it is for the body. Set up by that Four, jab, Paulie, just five, like you talked about. Six, yeah, seven. The jab is giving Sandlin fits. Because it's, it's okay, also preventing him from setting up anything. He's switching fight. back and forth, looking for a way to close the gap. But Williams' jab is really keeping him at bay. Very nice, ah. smooth round for, uh, for Williams. Henry Williams spends lots of time training with Julian Let Me Bang Lane. That's how you fucking work right there. Don't he trains hard, keeps a good mindset, and had a good first round. Caught him with the hook there, Paulie, oh, yeah. as they work on the cuts on the face of Sandlin. He's laying in his corner, right? Yep. That is exactly right. Julian fought Platinum Mike Perry. Henry Williams' first two bare knuckle wins came in a combined time of two minutes and 21 seconds. We are set to start round number two. Williams looking for his first win in the Trigon. He's got the black trunks, Sandlin, black with the neon green. You see that lead hand of, of Wade, just real smooth. There's, you know, you see Sandlin trying to close the gap. It's not for a lack of trying on the part of Sandlin. But again, just like I keep saying tonight, it's the thought of the night. It's, 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 it's skill, not will all the time, yeah. you know? There's definitely you need a certain amount of will, but also that skill. And, and Sandlin definitely has the will. He's trying to get in there as much as he can. But that jab has really offset him. And then when he gets in close there, he just he got in too close, and he didn't have enough spacing in order to, to, to 
get any leverage on those punches. Now he's back on the outside, and he's got to deal with the Williams jab again, Goldie. That Williams jab, or that, that Williams jab is good. So is his jab. <laughs> but if you don't deal with it, he's going to turn your face into jab. That's right. That's right. But it's it's long, too. It's long. It's frequent. And it's hard to time. It's hard because he's right off his rhythm. You see, it just kind of just shoots right out at you. Very straight. From the chin to the chin, back to the chin. See, and again, right there on cue. Over the top of you as well. You know, he encounters with it. Again, sometimes the basics is that kiss method. Keep it simple, stupid. I mean, yep. you'd be surprised how often that works even at, at a high, high level of fighting. We saw it in our last fight with John Bernard. Absolutely. Williams trying to close the gap, goes to the body. One thing about Salem, though, he comes from Muay Thai, so he's not going anywhere, you know? Nope. You're not going to get rid of him that easily. You may frustrate him, but you're going to have to keep a consistent base here all through this this fight. And it seems like Williams is doing that thus far, but it doesn't also it doesn't seem like Sandlin is one of those guys who's just going to go away. Sandlin did say that he believes Henry looks like a pure boxer as he scouted his opponent, and he's exactly right. Henry does look like a pure boxer, and his skills continue yep. to evolve. Yeah, and that, uh, an educated left hand mixed with some really sneaky feints, I mean, will just throw you off completely, and that's... You know, that's, a, that's been really the key here tonight for Williams. Obviously, he's been able to land some other punches as well off of it, but he's been able to disassemble Sandlin's offensive attack. You see Sandlin now thinking about that, Jeff. You see he's jumping in and jumping right back out. He's thinking about what's coming back. So now he's a little bit of hesitation is on the mind of Sandlin. He's still trying, but now all of a sudden, that jab is on his head. It's on his mind. It's literally on his head, too, but I'm saying it's on his mind as well as he's not thinking about it, and uh, it's, it's offsetting his, uh, his offensive attack and his offensive mindset. Sandlin with 13 professional MMA bouts, never stopped by KO or TKO. And you see, the, you know the thing is too, Goldie, they, they say you can jab with a jab or you don't hook with a hooker. So first thing Sandlin should be working on here is jabbing with Williams. Secondly, you can also take away the, the confidence of, of Williams' jab by countering it. You know, maybe come over the top of it with a right hand. But again, you've got to have the, the sense of mind and the, and the calmness seconds. to do it. I don't know that Sandlin's boxing skills are there with that. You know, right. He's a Muay Thai guy, but I don't know that he has the, 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 the sense of boxing skills to kind of roll the shoulder on the jab and kind of come over the top with the right hand. You do that once or twice, you're going to create a little bit of doubt in Williams' jab. And right now, Williams has no reason to doubt that jab at all. Matter of fact, he's growing confident, confidence with it. He's fainting with it. He's changing speeds with it. And Sandlin is just lost. Pass through the end zone in the end Pass the end zone. Look at me. Look at me. Don't forget to follow us on all forms of social media, Facebook, YouTube, X, and Instagram. BYB Extreme Fighting Series. Coming your way tonight from Rock Hill, South Carolina. Coming your way December 2nd, Denver, Colorado. Shout out to our man, Big Mo, in the UK doing some boxing this weekend. Lupe doing a spectacular job. But we miss you, Big Mo. We will see you in Denver in December. Round number three, Henry Williams, Jimmy Sandler. Okay, ready? Fight! Let's see if an adjustment can be made by Jimmy Sandlin. I know he'd like to throw that deep with Chin Tai his foot jab, but he can't do it here. <laughs> it would help him though. It would, it would. And that is a way that you do create distance in Muay Thai. Yeah, the range with when it comes when their kicks are there, you know, all of a sudden your range is different. You know, your sense yep. of distance has to be different. But, but Salem coming from Muay Thai is going to have the toughness. He's not going to be one of these guys. We see a lot of guys who come in high flying. As soon as they get hit with a couple of punches, they're gone, you know, in the trigon. There's nowhere to hide. Salem, you know, coming from Muay Thai, you know when somebody's background is Muay Thai, you know, they're, they're not going to get, uh, they're not going to want to quit after a few shots. You know, they're gonna, they're gonna, they might get frustrated with the lack of being able to match skills, but they're not going to be like no, looking for, oh, I, I don't like the way this feels. Right. Like, no, they they felt knees to the head. They, the punches ain't bothering them too as much. Take one leg kick and you'll know how tough a Muay Thai practitioner is. Forward punch only. You understand? Oh, yeah. <laughs> he just got a warning. I don't know what he got a warning for. Yeah, I didn't get the chance to see that as I was talking too much. Wayne Spadola, some forward punch only. <laughs> yeah, he tried to bring in a little Muay Thai in there. He might have indeed, yep. Might have been thinking elbows. Some of that's muscle memory, though, when, you, when yeah. you do have guys that have been Muay Thai practitioners, that jab just landed nicely. And again, it's, it's creating a confusion in Sandlin. He doesn't know how to 
get his head off center while at the same time closing the gap. He gets his head off center, but then he, he can't really translate it into smoothly transitioning from there to offense, you know? He's either trying to get his head off center, trying to get out of the way of the jab, or he's trying to attack. And then when he tries to attack, he's getting hit with the jab. Williams looking so composed. Bladed, long, and very effective. And again, you see, Williams, when he does put the offense behind it, he smoothly stays composed, but Sandlin's not going anywhere. He had, sometimes he takes it, sometimes he doesn't, but Sandlin's not, Sandlin's certainly frustrated, but he's not looking for a way out of the fight. He's still trying to win the fight. That, must, that winning mentality's still there. He's just, I think he's out of ideas. And again, the jab continues to frustrate him now. He's kind of thinking, he, he, I think he thinks that if he keeps switching stances, he can sort of offset the jab, but that's not worked. The, the way to do it is to try to counter that jab, but you've got to sort of hold your ground and try to counter it. You know, you can't like dip your head and just try to throw any which shot. You've got to actually see the jab and try to, uh, try to actually draw it out of your opponent, maybe with a, a touch jab of your own, try to draw his jab out and then come over the top of it with the right hand. You've got to set him up that way. Or, you know, and, and then you do that a couple of times, you know, now you can get him hesitating on it. And you can use your own jab now to start stuff. But right now, he's not able to do that. He keeps trying. I don't think he's going to stop trying. But Williams is staying very, very consistent. A little slip and rip is what he needs. Yeah, exactly. Or as Peter Welch, our good friend from South Boston, would say, a little s slip and rip. <laughs> yeah, depending on where you're from. Yep. You say it a little different. Right? That's right. Ten seconds. Hit him from far away, Goldie. Fa, 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 fa. Respect the bell, gentlemen. Boston accent. Ah. Yep. Sandlin showing his heart, but can he figure out how to solve the puzzle, which is the pit bull tonight? that his greatest influences are Arnold Schwarzenegger, Bruce Lee, and Rocky. So maybe Survivor will, uh, yeah, the Eye of the, yeah, the, the, the Tiger will ignite the sandstorm here in round number four. Williams is yelling in his corner. I don't know what he's mad about. He's, he's just <laughs> doing his pit bull, I guess, right? So he's, he's fighting a perfect fight so far. He really is. One of his favorite fighters, Boots Ennis, 31-0. 28 knockouts, the IBF interim welterweight world champion. Black and green for Sandlin, making his bare knuckle debut. Third fight in the Trigon for Henry Williams, looking for his first BYB win. See, that's the thing, Sandlin, even when he does try to land the shot, he's putting himself so out of position that his balance doesn't allow him to follow up nor to protect himself from the follow up of, of Williams on the counter because Williams does stay balanced even when you attack him. So therefore, he can shoot right back at you. Sandlin, on the other hand, when he's throwing a shot, puts himself a little bit off balance. So even if he does land it, it's, he's not able to follow up. And like I said, I mean, he's not able to defend off of it either because now he's out of position while Williams stays in position so he can attack right back. Pretty much same height, same reach on the tail of the tape, Paulie, but Williams just appears to be much longer, much taller, and obviously much more effective in this fight. Yeah, Williams knows how to use what he's got. Yes, you know, he's got, turning he, it over, yeah, right? He's got, his, he's got his, uh, his height and his reach, whatever it is there, and then, yes, it may be similar, but he stands up high, he uses those long, straight shots. No! And the body shot knocked out. Four, five, six, Sandlin is tough. Seven. Hey, come on over here, please. Yeah, got up right away. Like, going? all right, we'll yeah, just keep going. Right. going. Like I said, I mean, I could tell from the demeanor of him that he, he's not going to be one of these guys that's going to go anywhere. He's, yeah. He's here for the long haul. He's going to keep trying. It's just the, the frustration builds up here. And he switches stances, but again, if you really look at it, Goldie, he's still constantly in, right in front of Williams. And you've got to sort of figure out a way to attack on an angle. And he's not doing that. Even if he switches stances, he's still right in front. So it's not really doing a lot of, making a lot of difference, that whole switch in stances, as it's not making the jab of Williams ineffective either way. Williams figures out a way to use it effectively both ways. 
And he's controlling the movement as well of Jimmy Sandlin. Yeah. You always talk about cutting off the ring. The Trigon isn't very big, but Henry Williams is cutting off the Trigon, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely he is. And also, when you're able to control with your lead hand the way he is, it doesn't affect your stamina, really, you know, because you, can, you end up controlling the pace of the fight, you know? And, uh, you know, Williams looks very, very comfortable here because his lead hand has just been dictating the pace of the fight, and, and, and Sandlin hasn't really been able to, uh, you know, change anything up with that. Snapped the head back a moment ago again with another jab. Under 30 seconds on the clock, round number four. Fight scheduled for five three-minute rounds. He's not able to follow up because he's off, he's off balance, you see, and that's the thing. Look what Williams is. Williams is balanced and positioned, and he's the one who's on the front foot back on that jab. Positioning is everything, Goldie. It really is. And it, it's so enjoyable, Paulie, to watch the evolution of these battles in the Trigon, and Henry Williams is a perfect example tonight. Yeah, he really is, and and, and, and he's, this is boxing 101. And look at it, gets off to the side, slips off to the side, and counters with a body shot. See it from the, the different angle, you see right there. Gets his head offline with his own right hand, so he slips Sandlin's right hand by getting his head Ladies offline. Ladies and gentlemen, here back with left at the, the Rock Hill Sports and Event Center, this is the fifth and final round. Also, you understand that slip, getting his head off the center, he kept his balance. That's why he's able to get his head off center and then throw a shot. Sandlin gets his head off center sometimes when he throws a, sh a single shot here and there. Then he can't throw a, sh a shot from that head off center because his positioning is totally busted. His is totally busted. So he's not able to get his head off center while staying balanced. And again, that's not, I mean, it is a floor, but he, again, this guy doesn't come from boxing. He comes from other stuff. And so your, your movement is a little bit different when, in what he does. Certainly, he comes he's a born fighter because he's, he's totally comfortable despite the fact that he's behind in the fight. Getting hit is not bothering him. He's still trying to win. Henry Williams, quote, I needed to use my jab and get inside. In referring to the fight against Manuel De La Torre, he is definitely utilizing his jab to perfection. Here against Jimmy Sandlin, fifth and final round. That's a push, not a knockdown. Black trunks for Henry Williams. Black with the neon green for Jimmy Sandlin. And you see Williams just has a, a good sense of distance as well. Takes those half step back, steps back when, when Sandlin attacks and makes Sandlin come up just short on that offense a few seconds ago. When your steps aren't too big, when you slip, what happens? You can come right back with your own counters. Right. See there, right, right there. Takes that half step back on the slip and shoots back with a jab counter. And Sandlin, it seems like, really has to open his stance and lunge forward even to try to land a punch on Henry Williams. Yes, and that's because, you know, it's the footwork. You know, it, the, the forward, his footwork comes from Muay Thai where he uses yep. kicks. So, you know, kickboxers, Muay Thai guys, you know, when they, when you got to watch for kicks, you're stepping in a different way. You're closing the gap in a different way. And if you don't transition that footwork into pure boxing footwork, when you're in this kind of fight, it's going to slow your feet down. Nice jab there again from Williams. Mastering the sense of distance here in the fight. 90 seconds remain in this middleweight matchup. Undoubtedly, Sandlin needs a definitive knockout yeah, if he is going to have his arm raised. Yeah, Sandlin needs a, 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 a grand slam here, essentially, yep. you know? Well, Williams, I mean, Williams, you got you to gotta praise his game plan, his discipline, his sense of discipline in the fight, his ex sense of execution, and his corner as well for, you know, continuing to guide the ship throughout the way and keeping him cool and composed against a guy who was sturdy, stubborn, and wouldn't quit in Sandlin, you know? Because the guys like this can sometimes make you come undone despite the fact that you're doing well. And so good job for uh, uh, Williams' corner as well to keep Williams focused and on the game plan and not breaking. Because those guys like Sandstorm, they just won't go away. Yeah, yeah, and they can end up sort of frustrating you, even if you're winning, and, and, and some, we've seen guys at times come undone even if they're winning the fight, they, because the guy won't leave them alone. You can tell that Henry Williams learned a lot from his fight back in December here in Rock Hill. That runner-up for fighter of the night, Tommy Turner's fight was on short notice, but this is the best Henry Williams has looked, and he's 25 seconds away from his first BYB win. Good 
body shot. Here we go, ready? Okay, went either way. Right. Yeah, okay, really could have. It was a slip on the way down. Ten and a seconds. shot to the rib cage again from Henry Williams. The pit bull nearly perfect in this five round matchup hey. here tonight. There you go. He picks the shot up. Yep. Have a look at this slip, Goldie. He might have been on the way down before the body shot, like you said. Yeah, he was kind of it's very close, but I think he's getting he's, he saw he's going down right there, and then the body shot kind of comes right behind it. So a good body shot, but I, he was already on the way down before the shot. It's almost a good eye by the ref there. It's cauliflower is cut in there somewhere. He got banged in there somewhere. Gotta get that shit taken care of. I think Harlan's just no, 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 he's got Sandstorm will be back. He will learn from this experience, and you can see how tough he is, shaking his head, and not even a mark on the face of the pit bull, Henry Williams, who indeed did pitch a shutout here tonight. And will earn his first win inside the mighty Trigon. The official decision is in, and here is Lupe. Ladies and gentlemen, after going the distance inside the Rock Hill Sports and Event Center, all three judges are in complete agreement, turning in identical scores of 50 to 43. All in favor of the winner, by way of unanimous decision, the Pit Bull!